indicting the Nigerian army. Uh, well, that's uh, even after denial by the federal government. That inquiry panel submitted a report which says Nigerian armed forces shot and killed anti-police brutality protesters last year. Tens of thousands of Nigerians took the streets last year October uh, calling for the special anti-robbery squad uh, police unit to be disbanded and the report leaked on Monday and identified 41, 48 casualties 48 casualties after the Nigerian army opened fire on the demonstrators. Uh, the army has denied shooting live rounds at the protesters. It's been back and forth even with the federal government uh, through the Minister of Information al Hadi Lai Mohammed denying that and also um, uh, saying the international media reports uh, of CNN and uh, some other organizations, the Amnesty International, were false and they should come and apologize uh, to Nigerians and also Nigeria as a country. Uh, the NSAS protest, if you remember, rocked Nigeria uh, for, for about two weeks and it climaxed on the 20th of October 2020. Uh, the police unit had... Uh, uh, being accused of robbing, attacking, and even killing people. And according to that report by the, by the inquiry panel, uh, soldiers intentionally shot at protesters on 20th of October at the Lekki Toll Gate. And it also found that after the army retreated, police officers continued and violence, and that continued the violence rather, and tried to clean up the scene, taking bodies away on trucks and removing bullets. And some of the findings also matched uh, previous reports by Amnesty International as well as local and international media. I understand that Premium Times also conducted investigations, uh, CNN conducted, BBC later conducted, and all indicted uh, the uh, Nigerian army of shooting and of course killing people at that toll gate. Although uh, the federal government has denied that severally. But the latest twist is this report uh, that got leaked and also indicting and saying, uh, well, uh, the federal, the Nigerian army killed people that day at the Lekki Toll Gate. Anyways, a member of the panel has threatened to release full uh, report if the government fails to fulfill promises. So we're asking the very big question this morning, what next after the NSAS panel report? Joining me this morning virtually, uh is a legal practitioner let's get a legal angle we're also going to get a journalistic angle to this this morning a uh, barrister uche Mwokocha, uh, she is the abia state coordinator national human rights commission glad to have you join us this morning on the platform good morning to you barrister good morning yes thank you very much you're welcome uh, now i'm sure you've seen in the news how the nigerian army uh, was indicted in that report. It was leaked, although the full report is not yet out, and some members of the uh, panel had threatened to release the full report if the government doesn't act uh, quickly on that report. I don't know what you make of this, and the big question is, what is next after this uh, NSAS uh, panel report? I must congratulate the Lagos State panel for, for their boldness, their courage, and what they've done so far. I think uh, of all the panels, judicial panels set up to investigate this uh, answers and police brutality, I think uh, Lagos State Government, to me, has emerged the most courageous so far. Because they did not shy away from their responsibility. They did not hesitate to call things by their names they worked hard i must also say that uh, they were able to achieve as much as they did because of the support they got from the Lagos state government the Lagos state government said whatever you people want i will give you whatever you want whatever the panel wants i'll give them and the Lagos state government fulfilled that aspect of the promise whatever the panel needed monetary support to go for investigation to visit to invite people people who have been invited to the panel to testify they are being given transport money so everybody invited came unless somebody who did not want to come like some people who have something to hide shied away from you know coming to the panel to say what they knew about the 
investigations being carried out by the panel. I think I also congratulate the Lagos state government. There was no hushing. Mm. There was no warning. Be careful. You are spending a lot of money. You are doing this, you are doing that. There, there was absolutely no interference from them. According to both the panelists and the the Lagos state government, they agreed on that there was no interference. From the okay, uh, and they were given freeway. Very stuff. So they were able to achieve what they did. Okay. And we are waiting on the Lagos state government. We believe that they will do as they used to. And they've already started uh, doing it. They've already nominated a panel, a, mm -hmm. a subcommittee, not a panel this time, a subcommittee headed by the Attorney General to work on the report of the panel and to produce a white paper on it for okay. government implementation and government has given them just two weeks say that after two weeks they will submit the 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 white paper report to the executive council of the state and they will start acting on it okay with uh, you using your legal uh, uh from your legal angle now uh, barrister i want you to help us uh, find meanings to what is happening right now. Now, after that white paper, those that have been indicted, uh, will they get punished? Can they get punished from the report of that uh, white paper? The answer is yes and no. Okay. Yes, in that if the bodies consigned, if the bodies consigned decide to punish them, it's common knowledge that the state governors do not have powers over security agencies in this country. All the security agencies, the police, the DSS, the, the army, they are all under the control of the federal government. Mm. It's the federal government that will finally indict or punish those who are indicted. So the panel may indict somebody and the federal government that con or the body that controls the person may decide not to punish. I want to point out that this is not the first time panels are looking into the activities of Nigerian police. Okay. As far as, and that of soldiers, as far as brutality is concerned. National Human Rights Commission raised their warning in 2017. We had a panel that looked into the brutality of these security agents. And we raised a warning. We made our foundings, we made our recommendation, we sent them to the, the bodies responsible and to the federal government. And we sounded a note of warning then in 2017 that if nothing is, was done about the activity of SARS then, and the police, the way they were operating, as far back as 2017, that something terrible will happen. After all our findings, our recommendations and everything, nothing came out of it. What happened that was of uh, police officers that were inducted, we are transferred from one state to another state. Nothing happened. So that to us, that is not punishment. It did not act as a deterrent to others. No, no. Until it came to this. So I don't know if after all these efforts made by the state government, it is not within the powers of the state government to punish because mm. the state government does not control those bodies okay but if but, the power if, if the if the people that are supposed to punish them fail to punish them there's nothing the state government can do but i am sure if it's within the powers of the state government to punish them lego state government will surely do that and uh, in your analysis you've said the government uh, is also an actor in this case and it might be very difficult uh, for those that uh, were offended to get justice uh, to get punished i mean uh, so one will be asking is it possible uh, to go international with this case for example taking the issue to icc you know uh just to stay away from the nigerian court and the panels that have been set up and also the government because the government is also an actor in all these looking at what the federal government has said through the minister of information severally 
denying it more than five times the minister of uh, uh, information had denied that people died at lekki toll gate despite incriminating evidence against that uh, the, i want to say that the matter has already gone international a lot of international body has been making comments and uh, write-ups about the incident since it happened about our minister for information i would like to believe that he made his own statements based on feedbacks he got from uh, these bodies that are involved if something if somebody complains about the police and the information minister hears about what well, information minister will ask the police the same police that we are complained against what happened and it's what the police told him that he, he said without considering the overwhelming evidence on ground and what the people concerned are saying and that is very very unfortunate our minister for information just refused to listen to the people and to listen to the facts and now that uh, the judicial uh, panel have come up to state what they found out as facts remember that while these things we are going on our minister of information i would like to believe was there in abuja there's no way he can be in Abuja and be so sure what is happening at Lagos, what happened that day, that night at Lake. I think he was just talking based on uh, information given to him by those bodies. But he wasn't very fair because he would have also said what the people on the consign said to make the information balance. He wasn't very, very fair, he said. In his speeches, I must say that he wasn't very fair. Mm. He should have said what both sides said. Okay, uh, but Barry's and allow and, and now say that the panel panel will find that. Let's wait for the final, you know, findings from the panel. But he didn't say that he was backing one side of uh, the, Bar the, the, the citizen. It's not fair. Ba Barrister, just before I let you go this morning, uh, what is the implication of this report uh, to Nigeria as a nation at the Committee of Nations uh, internationally? The implication is that we have a very brutal law enforcement security. We have a that are, it shows that Nigerian securities have no security authorities, security operators have absolutely no respect for human rights. They knew what they were doing were wrong, and they went ahead to try to cover it. From the slips we get from the from the panel city yes they knew there was shooting there was collection of uh, bodies that are now declared uh, missing nobody has found them the bodies were removed the the the, the, the bullets were picked the bullets were picked there was they did everything to ensure that nobody found out whatever they did there they even tampered with the CCTV. They, they, so which means they knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing was wrong. They went ahead and did it, and they tried to cover it up. All right, uh, Barrister. It shows. It shows. It shows that the Nigerian security agents, as far as human rights are concerned, mm. that they don't really care, and the brutality they exhibit when they are dealing with citizens is is terrible. It's just terrible. Uh, Bar Barista Wokoch, I want to appreciate your analysis this morning on the platform. Thank you very much for speaking to us. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, that's uh, Barista Uchen Wokoch, uh, the Abia State Coordinator of the National Human Rights Commission. Now, let's uh, get a journalistic angle to this, uh, this uh, latest development uh, from Lagos, uh, talking about the NSAS uh, panel set up by the Lagos state government. And uh, I have a friend and a colleague joining me in the studio, Emmanuel Umwazwe, of course, to help us uh, find meanings to this, especially the government's handling of the information right from the onset, when many Nigerians came out and said, look at what happened. Now, even a popular celebrity who absconded the country and left, uh, uh, citing uh, some security is, uh, situation surrounding his um, uh, her movement out of the country, DJ Switch also live streamed on Instagram, and that 
uh, has also been uh, faulted by the Minister of Information severally in different platforms, not once, not twice, but more than five times. The minister has denied this on behalf of the federal government because I understand uh, he speaks for the federal government. So one will be asking, the management of the information and the management of the NSAS situation, especially information-wise, how will you rate the federal government? Well, um, uh, first of all, the, the the Minister for Information and Culture, like Mohammed, was doing his job. Okay, so now no one, no one would expect him to do otherwise, uh, especially uh, except where um, uh, conscience is the main uh, thing of the day. Okay, now in this particular case, I would want, I, I would just want to look at the approach by this by, by this government official you know uh, permit me to go a bit religious just to buttress my point uh, uh, romans 3 4 a part of it will say let god be true and all men liars okay on the flip side from all the investigative reports either by this uh, by the cnn bbc uh, premium Times and other Amnesty local and uh, Amnesty International and all that. Uh, the Minister of Information wants all of us to believe that these people are liars and only him. No, he and, said. And let let and, me quote and, him. And the government. Let, 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 let's deal with those issues here. Yes. He said, did not just fall short of mm. journalistic standards, mm. but reinforces the disinformation mm. that is going around yeah. on the issue. So Good. So, 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 some so. journalistic standards mm. were not followed. So we are saying the same thing. We are saying the same thing. So every other person that reported on this was to be discredited. Only the government angle is to have some kind of credence completely false. Now, in this particular case, we have a situation where the government itself, apart from the fact that it authorized what happened at uh, Lekki, apart from the fact that it authorized what happened at Lekki, tried to suppress the media from acting. Remember that stations like Channels and uh, Arise TV were all fined because even when they had correspondents who reported live from the scene, now let's talk about uh, 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 taking away the fact that DJ Switch, you know, uh, uh, did a live Instagram uh, uh, streaming right from there. We 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 are having a uh, uh, a government a government that you know disrespected the people that elected them. Is there a way forward from this? What do you think the government should do? Because it looks like you're also indicting the government here. So if in your analysis you're indicting the government, what should the government do as it stands now to get the trust of the people? Uh, it looks like uh, all the analysis are now against the government, looking at their handling of the information and how uh, the October 20 event ended. About October 2020 event. The ended. government is yet to speak. To my, to, to the best of my knowledge, the government is yet to react to this report. The federal government is yet to react to this report. To the best of my knowledge, at the moment, it is only when it reacts will it maintain its, sta uh, its stance, as expressed by the Minister of Information. If it does, then. There is no way forward because you need to accept that you are wrong. You need to apologize. You need to find the survivors of this particular but don't, massacre. Don't forget, Emmanuel, that uh, the issuance of a white paper is the standard method of releasing such a report. And that has not been done. What, what is in the public is a leaked part where uh, the, the panel indicted the federal government. Yes. Yes. So one will be asking, maybe, maybe, maybe that's the reason the federal government is yet to uh, react the, the, to that. The, uh, the, 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 the state, the local state, the yeah. remember that this particular panel mm. was not set up by the federal government. The federal government only gave a directive that states should go and empower panels 
uh, empanel uh, 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 these uh, uh, committees, you know, in their respective states. Okay, Lagos State is just one of them. There is no central panel by the government, by the federal government of Nigeria. So this particular report is not to the uh, uh, federal government of Nigeria, but the Lagos State government, which I understand is now making move. To, to to issue a white paper on this particular issue. Now, now I, I listened to Barista uh, Wokocha, yes. you know, when she was, you know, hailing the uh, Lagos State government. But a part for, for, for cooperation and all, uh, all that, allowing free hand and all that. But a part of this particular leaked report said that the Lagos State, if the Lagos State government had released funds for autopsy when it w- when uh, uh, it was needed that a lot of people would have been identified a lot of bodies would have been identified but th- th- there was there was that uh, obstruction to releasing funds that made autopsy impossible at a certain point in fact that report said it i read it okay so so you'll be able to see that the government actually didn't give the maximum cooperation it should have or support it should have given to the panel to be able to uh, see that uh, bodies, autopsies were, were conducted on bodies for, for uh, proper identification. Now that aside, just like he mentioned also, the state government has limit. In fact, it's limited. There, 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 there is, you know, a limit to what that state government can do. It is only, in fact, it's recommended that it, 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 it made mention of some officers that, to, that are to be sanctioned and uh, uh, that are also to be released from duty. These officers are government, federal government uh, empl- uh, employees. The state government has no uh, 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 capacity to either relieve, relieve anybody of their duty or sanction any of them because all these people are federal government personnel that committed this crime this crime according to uh, the the uh, the report we have just read now at the end of the day there is a problem and that particular problem is that one as i mentioned earlier the federal government did not impanel any uh, uh, commission as regards this mm. so that you be able to say okay this particular report is going f- to the federal government so that the federal government will act on it. Okay. Whatever recommendation that the Lagos State government will be given, may, may will, will be bringing forward, may either be trashed, or, you know, uh, whatever. Or the federal government may say, no, we we, we are not. We, we we do not have. Uh, we are not in the right place to uh, to 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 implement what you are talking about okay, because ja, this particular ja, partner is not for we, us. We need to throw the lines open. I'm going to return to you to ask you some other questions and you help us with the analysis this morning. It is still the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions, right here on Flow 94.9 FM, the flow of God's own state, and we're talking about the human rights issues arising from the Lagos panel report on the NSAS uh, protest. And as it stands now, the United States government as well as human rights groups, including Amnesty International, has co- have called for action on the report of the Lagos State Judicial Panel of Inquiry on restitution and for the victims of SARS-related abuses and other matters, which stated that at least nine persons were killed and 39 others injured at the Lekitol Plaza on October 20, 2020. However, the Nigerian Army and the federal government refused to comment on the report, which was submitted to Governor Babachi De Sonwolu of Lagos State uh, on Monday. And uh, a part of that record, the report was leaked. And the report described what happened at Lekki Tollgate as massacre. Although the federal government had, uh, in one of the events where the minister denied the, what happened there, uh, called it phantom, phantom. massacre. Anyways, the lines are very much open. Joining in the conversation, you can also drop your comments on our Facebook page. We're live on Flow. 949 FM, that's on Facebook. Uh, the studio lines are 0808-182-6949 or 0811-605-2949. Hello, good morning to you. Good morning, Michael. You're welcome. 
I am Izzy. Izzy is my name. All right. I'm calling this from from my village, Umala Sulu, Umala Sulu specifically. All right. Great. Welcome. Yeah, yes. What transpired at Lake Tugu is complete absurdity, which is the state the unsafe civil military relation in Nigeria. Especially when it has to do with the civil population, relationship between the military and the civil population. What happened there is what is normally serious. Those we are playing with the tax money to protect us, the waters of emergency will turn and to use the same weapon we procure with the tax money against the market. So, it is not a new thing. I am not surprised that such incident occurred and the minister who wants to protect us at all costs retain such information with the lady and even ask CNN and other international media organizations that we feel that incident to apologize. The federal government is the only people that are saying the truth in that matter. Legally, what happened here calls for a serious review in our legal system. All right. And a touch in the Nigerian constitution as long as it has to do with the fundamental human rights of Nigeria. Let me stop All here. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the platform on Flow FM. Good morning, Michael. You're welcome. I remember Mr. Prince Will Swagu from here in Omonachobo. All right, Mr. Prince Will. Mike, my thanks goes to the goes to Lagos State Government for them to have carried out this um, this um, investigation investigation up to this level. My thanks goes to them. And equally, I'm urging other states that this um and and you know partook, let them ensure that they follow up with Lagos State um, issue. Now let me go to the federal government. I believe, like I Ama, one of the one of the writers in Ghana, he says that you can see the end of things even at their beginning. I, I think uh, all that goes up must come out, come down one day. Uh, to the to, to, to the information minister, it's a very big lesson to the entire world. Let the entire world see what's going on in Nigeria on how we are being managed. So this happening in Lagos is a very big, uh, it's an eye opener to the entire world on what is going on in Nigeria. So let let the let the information minister. Let him take a clue and uh, take a correction from that. Right. Mate, may God bless you, my brother. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the platform. Hello, good morning, Mike. Good morning. It's Okafo Chinidu. I'm calling from Omai. All right, Mr. Okafo. Okay, I, I think the deed has been done. Whatever that has taken place uh, in the key toll gates have already been done. Uh, my own take here is that uh, let all the recommendations be implemented. Then other states, we have such panel, judicial panels, were instituted and they took place. Uh, I want uh, the government of that state or all the states to make their own reports also available for the implementation because I know there are victims those who were brutalized by the military men. So let such uh, victims be compensated. That is my own thing. Then the Nigerian government, I believe, should also apologize. Not especially Laya Mohammed. He, he should come and apologize to Nigerians for such fake reports that he brought at the initial time. Thank you. All right, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. He's Lai Mohammed, not uh, the other way around, anyways. Uh, keep your calls coming, keep your comments uh, coming. Not Yoruba. Yes, sir? The guy is not Yoruba. So uh, yeah, Yoruba. I, I, that's the reason I I accepted that, but he's Lai Mohammed. Uh, also, Francis Omaga on our Facebook page says, watching live from Amagunze in Enugu. Uh, prior to Lekki Toll Gate Saga, Lai Mohammed was actually misinformed. Uh, misinformed Nigerians and the world germane to the NSAS panel report. Let the federal government handle this matter meticulously because the whole world is watching. May God help us. Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the platform. Yeah, good morning. My name is Victor. You're welcome, Mr. Victor. Um, I'm calling from other states, my precisely. All right. 
um, I'm about the Tegi lawyer and the and um, Nikki told me the massacre that happened last year. Um, we all could um, agree that that killing be only happened in Lagos State. It happens also in other states of the federation. But the Lagos State phone was like an eyesore. And again, the federal government, the, after the report and everything, the evidence that showed up, the federal government decided not to show the truth because if, as, if they really uh, 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 um, valued the citizens, they would also hear from them and also know how they feel. Because see, there's, there's no amount of money that you can give or say or anything we say that will display someone's life. People were murdered. Brutalities, like many things happened. But the federal government, like, like with the, with the uh, 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 um, information minister, Lai Mohammed, just purposely refused to give out the truth. But now, now the truth is, these people, these people should be brought to book. They should, be, like, but the Lai Mohammed himself should be he should resign. These people, they really know. They really knew what they did. They picked up the bodies. See, today, those bodies have not been found. And they even made us like we started doubting our sanity. Our sanity. You understand? So these people need to be brought to book, and also the right thing should be done. And not just only the federal government. The international bodies should also take part of this, so that they can feel. The pain of the Nigerian citizens. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mr. Victor, for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, Chinedu Okafo on the Facebook page says, uh, "Good morning, Mike. The brutality exhibited by the armed security personnel at the Lekki Toll Gate was done under instruction of someone. The false report from the government on the killing that took place was a way of covering up." My take on this issue is for the government to adequately compensate all the victims in various states. Let the recommendations of the judicial panel be implemented. Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the platform. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Michael. My name is Michael. My name is Michael. I'm calling from Abba. You're welcome, comrade. Thank you, Michael. Let me uh, enlighten myself with what the, what the uh, last uh, speaker what he says, some of the things he says, I, I agree with him because uh, I am not the spokesperson of the federal government, but I know in a situation or such a report, they need to study it carefully before they make any statement. And I want our people as a man of worry, let him do the news for if anything, like uh, the word, uh, the, word the, the, the report from the Lagos State. Uh, brought or concern this issue. Let them look at it juridically. And it too, Michael, it looks like for me, it looks like this thing that happened, let them know use it and play politics. We're talking about life and death here. It's no issue of let anybody not take it and to play politics. Let international community let us come and verify what those report now from Lagos. All right. If the one they will bring is talent. Before I submit, finally, Michael. Yeah, we're talking about the report from Lagos. What about Cardia? Because I'm convinced that the Southern State Government set such committee since that time. Uh, now, that, that we has, don't know what's happening. Just a moment. It has been submitted to the government, and uh, we're yet to get any white paper on it to have an idea of what transpired uh, at during the sitting of the panel in Abias. So just to bring you up to speed on what we have concerning the uh, re the Abia State uh, panel of inquiry. Okay, my turn. Right. Like now, like this Lagos State now is a public domain. People have seen what happened, what they report. In other here, we don't know what, what they submit, what they are report, what they are report, they are concerned about it. That is the issue of what I am trying to inflate, let people ask about it. Thank you. All right, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, keep those comments coming on our page. It is Flow 949 FM. And also, you can call 0808 
0812-682-6949 or 0811-605-2949. You can also drop messages on 906 510 And we're looking at uh, the human rights issues arising from the Lagos panel report on NSAS protest. Uh, of course, uh, we've spoken with uh, Barrister Uchen Wokocha, the Abia State Coordinator of the National Human Rights Commission. And right with me in the studio is Emmanuel Luanzwe. Of course, the leaked viral report of NSAS judicial panel on police brutality and other leg related abuses uh, was presented to the Lagos State Government on Monday and uh, it reopened a sepulchre on the October 20, 2020 uh, shooting incident at Lekki Toget. Uh, some findings in the leaked report indicted Nigerian soldiers for opening fire on the assembly of unarmed protesters without provocation while they were waving the Nigerian flag and singing the national anthem which led to the killing of some persons and ensuring violence in the state. And the federal government had denied that severally through the Minister of uh, Information, uh, Mr. Lai Mohammed, who described the incident as massacre without bodies. And the Nigerian army also denied it. And uh, the damning justice Doris uh, Okunwubi led panel report is yet to be officially released to the public. But reactions raged with many calling for appropriate actions over some of the report findings, uh, adding that it should be not be made to gather dust like several other government enabled panel reports. Now, uh, from your journalistic uh, angle uh, and of journalistic point of view, uh, Emmanuel, what do you think those international organizations indicted by the federal government should do? Um, one, the federal government tried to jeopardize their professionalism. How? You know, if uh, 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 an international organization news agency like CNN you know, was able to carry out an investigation that clearly depicts what happened. And the federal government... And stood by it. And, stu and, and stood and by it. Even after the demand for apology from the federal government, mm -hmm. and they stood by it. I, I, I think they should approach the court. They should sue oh. the federal government with the evidence of what they have. The federal government needs to show why this particular, why their reports, uh, you know, were false. You know, but coming to that, away, away from, uh, you know, what, uh, it was not just uh, the CNN. Okay. Just as I said earlier, the BBC was there. Uh, channels, Arise TV, even uh, uh, AIT all these people i mentioned earlier that our own regulatory agency had to find these people because it, the regulatory agency is under the control of the federal government so it, uh, it was cajoled into f finding uh, uh these uh media platforms and a way of gagging the media is a way of gagging the media from uh, freely expressing their constitutional mandate of telling the truth no matter whose ox is god but unfortunately too in the words of the uh, the, the information minister calling the whole saga phantom massacre without bodies unfortunately some nigerians bought into that and that's where you have this mantra asking where are the bodies but let me take us back to uh, october 2018 a journalist by the name of uh, uh, Jamal Kasoji was killed in Istanbul. In fact, at the Saudi Arabian yeah, uh, at the Saudi Arabian embassy mm. in Turkey, the body was not found up to this moment. Investigation but, but, was conducted. But, but investigation was, was conducted, and it was found that this his body was dissolved in acid. Okay. The body was not found. This particular panel also investigated and found out that the soldiers who shot Nigerians waving the national flag and singing the national anthem took the bodies away, just like what happened in Umuahia here. During the Operation Python dance, bodies of slain people were taken away. All right, we need to okay. get more, okay. more okay. reactions okay. On, on the phone line. Yeah, yes, so, so I need to tell these Nigerians also, they believed the uh, uh, Jamal Khashoggi uh, story. 
but question their own story. All right. It's Hel- unfortunate. Hello. Good morning to you. Welcome Hello? to the platform. On Hello. FM. Yes, I can hear you. We can hear you loud. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. What's your name? Yeah. This is the uh, report. What, what's your name, please? Dedicated, has been dedicated Nigeria. Nobody in Nigeria now should believe the government again. Anytime the government says, go, don't go. Because you can, you can just see. Human beings are killed. Somebody, the uh, information minister is telling us that nothing. They will tell you we have killed Boko Haram. It is a lie. Boko Haram has killed Nigeria. They are coming to Abuja. They are coming to Abia. See? Let us support agitation. Then this country is divided. All right, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, we've got, uh, okay, we've done this anyways. Uh, we're already wrapping up. So, uh, Emmanuel, what next? The what federal next? government should own up. It that, should that, swallow. That, that's it, an it, admittance. If the it, federal government should, it should admit. It's, it's more like swallowing. It, yes, your, yes, your it should. Speech, it, so it should. If, if, yeah. if, 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 if the federal government is to be taken with respect, is to be is to be seen as a respectable entity governing a country mm. okay it should accept the fact that it aired that it commanded the killing of its own citizens and also that the report has indicted these officers and that particular whatever uh, 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 recommendation that was given by that particular panel in lagos should be implemented to the latter that's the way forward okay. otherwise otherwise uh, we do not have. Uh, in fact, the, the government has just placed, you know, uh, uh, some kind of. Um, it, it has placed an inhibition to whatever level of trust. Okay. The citizens has on on, on it. Uno chiri uh, chinomso. That's on the Facebook page. Says I'm watching from Umar here. Concerning the Lekki Tollgate massacre, let's not be shedding Lai Mohammed by saying he was misinformed. The minister knows what happened. He's fully aware of what happened, just that he wants to cover up. Anyway, sir, we're done with the show today, and definitely it is a developing story. We're waiting for that uh, a white paper. The white paper to be released. The governor of Lagos State, mm. Babadide Sanwolu, has promised that in two weeks, uh, the report from that white paper will be made public, of course. The white paper will be made public, rather. That will be the report from the mm, panel. Mm. The official one will be made public. So, it's a developing story, and of course, we keep keep a tab on that uh, for you, right here on the floor of God's Own State, Flow 94.9 FM. Many thanks to my guest, Emmanuel Umazwe, for joining this morning. Oh, thank you very much for and having me, And also, Barista Uchen Wokocha for joining virtually. And many thanks to the producer, Samson Eze, and Taye Lulu Akinloton. Do enjoy the rest of your day. And the guys behind the visuals on our Facebook page, are Stanley and Chinedu. My name is Michael Oni. Oh,